Yeah. Jerome, brother Jerome, you make me feel home. <laughs> <laughs> Only you and I know because we on that zone. <laughs> on that zone. Oh, man, coming straight through the phone. Oh, you already know. How are you? Like, truly, how, how are you? Like, I'm so... I, I had a conversation today with my auntie, and I literally really had to ask her. Sometimes, and I like how you started out this conversation about taking these breaks. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're so caught up about the seriousness of, like, the story of our life that sometimes we need to fast from our the life, the story, and just hear somebody else's, like, really indulge. You know, so so how are you, brother? <laughs> I'm doing amazing, man. I'm doing amazing. You know, we're we're living, we're living. You know, yeah. One of my friends says, "Living the dream." You know, sometimes to live the dream, you gotta wake up. You know, yeah. and start living the dream. So, yeah, man. How are you, brother? How are you? I'm I am excited. Honestly, once I saw the invitation of who wants to go live, I was immediately like, I need to catch up with him. It's been a while. He opened up the opportunity. This was timing, you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we we look so much at the as my aunt put it today, the hourglass in front of us, and we're like, oh, look at all this time being wasted. But it's not necess necessarily true. It's like there is no positive or negative. You can flip the story and say. This is time. It is given to me. It is my gift to me. That is what I've been brought to do since my conception and the whole process all the way until like my remains are, are no longer remaining, but there's an essence of it that still carries. Why do you think Bruce Lee and all these other characters have lived for so long, you know, uh, like outside of their actual like living bodies, but this is the kind of excitement that I'm on, Jerome. I'm just like so fulfilled with all the th things that have all the sand that's in my hourglass. I think that's the best way I can put it. I'm excited to enjoy all the sand in my hourglass. Yes, yes, I love it. You know, with the time, with the time that's at hand, enjoying the sand. Yeah, enjoy. <laughs> Gotta make, make those sand candles with your hands. <laughs> yes, yes, bro. Yes. You know, when you mentioned Bruce Lee, Dorian, you know, what do, what do you enjoy about Bruce Lee? That's one of my idols. Like, that's definitely, you know, one of my inspirations is Bruce Lee for sure. Ironically enough, it's the answer is with what you just said. I, I, I'm inspired by his inspiration because mm -hmm. you, who knows how many times a kid who has never seen karate, who has never heard of anything movie kung fu related and here's a quote by bruce lee he's like damn that sounds really impactful who was that bruce lee or they watch the video of him with the nunchucks playing ping pong for the first time and they're like damn that's crazy and it's that level of focus in what i would like to call and i was actually having this conversation today crazy enough i swear these things come around um it's that level of focus within the performance the form like we are now i was having this conversation about um, music and how or this digital age that we're in. and since there's so much it's very easy for artists in general to just be washed away from the abundance of what's popping or what the algorithm is feeding off of that said there is still the true essence as artists and performers that go out and actually do it in the corners of the street maybe a hat maybe an open box maybe nothing at all they just want to perform and there are people all that matters to that artist is that somebody took the time to notice feel inspired by being present for this gift of the art that we have and it's like the quote that you always talk about with pablo picasso i swear to you i keep walking around with that in my brain but it's literally that as artists we stand in our corner we provide our art to the world we give our gift and there are people that receive it and feel inspired by that. Going back to the Bruce Lee thing now. And now it just trickles off. And I, I literally just dropped the song today called Ripples. Literally. So that's what it is. It's a ripple effect. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. You know, it's, it ripples out. It's a domino effect. It's a ripple effect. And you never see the ripple stop. You know, once you, 
You throw the pebble in the pond, the pebble drops, and you never see the ripple stop. You know, it just keeps going. Yeah, that ripple can become a wave. That wave can be a tsunami. Right. It can be a lake, a puddle, anything. And one thing that I really feel with just hearing this, mm -hmm. and what I love about our relationship and how it's been functioning, is a lot like with Siddhartha and the ferryman. In the story, he meets the Siddhartha, who is on this journey to be awakened, to find Nirvana, uh, runs across this ferryman at a young age, like about our age, you know, in our 20s, 30s. And years later, we go and experience through our lives. And ironically enough, we come back. And just like that time period, as the ferryman said, just like the river, things come back. And it's a lot like that time. It's about that sand it it's always there the ripples are always there and i'm always and i also feel the weight of the reality that energy never ends nor begins it's just transferred and i really feel that and honestly i feel like i'm on i'm kind of bringing the the yang i don't want to say you ain't yin you're a lot of yang because you got that spice jerome and that's why people you know mess with you you know they like you pop up grease on the skillet but you're, so I'll say I'm bringing more of my yin to, my, to your yang. My yin is that I have experienced those times where I am up at night and I just want to consume because that is what I meant, I've been built to do, you know? However, when you really do take that time and you realize how much sand is actually at your disposal, you're like, oh, I can actually like work on a breathing exercise. Oh, I can do a little bit of qigong. For anybody who's popping on and having done Qigong with Jerome and 11 o'clock Eastern Standard, if you already know, that'll take you home and your soul. Anyway, you keep it rolling. So you use the time to create an energy that you really want in your life. There are times where, like last night, I was on my way getting water and I came back and I told myself, when Dixie was open, I was like, don't get a snack. You don't need to buy anything. And I learned my lessons during that. Yeah, you'll be faced with challenges when you want to go above that wall, but that's the challenge, going above the green. But here's the thing, my friend, once you go up against that mountain, you look at the other, ah, that's the other side of the horizon. That's the other thing the sun is shining on. That's the other side of the shadow. That's what we have to do with ourselves, with our ego, our stories and et cetera. And damn, how do we get here? <laughs> Ugh. It's a journey, you know, it's a journey. I love how it all unfolds, you know, I love how the story is told and witnessing it all unfold, you know, because it's like when you were talking about Bruce Lee, I had so many memories of things that I was inspired by watching, you know, Enter the Dragon, Chinese Connection and, you know, the, the Game of Death and like all these movies where he's just expressing and he's he does have that yang energy that yang energy as well he could be yin he could be calm cool and collected but he also could be fierce and ferocious right fast and furious right so it's like he could be like you know sitting back the the calm the quiet one and in the next moment ah! that ah! right he's the one that you gotta watch out for so one of the quotes that i love by bruce lee was He's, I do not fear the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once. He said, I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. Like, like, like one kick, you know, like one kick. I was like, could you imagine somebody's practiced one, just one? But they practiced it so many times that it's just, it's just who they are. It just become a part of them. Like they don't even have to think about it. You know, it just, it's like they think and it's already there. I remember um, Jackie Chan was talking about being on the set with Bruce Lee because I think he used to be his. Like uh, there was sometimes he was playing for for certain stunt doubles. He would do doubles for certain people. And when he was doing stunt work with Bruce Lee, he said, "If you." If you watch Bruce Lee, he said, if he kicks and you blink, you can't 
cannot see him kick. He said, you cannot see Bruce Lee kick. <laughs> he said, if you blink, you already missed it. It's already there, you know? So I was like, whoa. That'd be the part, Jerome. And this goes to uh, that you said in one of your readings. Mm -hmm. uh, it's when you talked about how there, there's the thinking mind and the doing mind. It's the, the, the I am peeling the potato and I am peeling the potato. There are people that are going to hear that and they're going to be like, oh, I am peeling the potato. So they're going to be like, let me try to see it. You know what I mean? And then there are the people that are just. And that's it. Mm -hmm. They don't have to make a big show about it. And I think uh, there's and let's go back to the original question. What inspires us about Bruce Lee? We're going to that's what we're going to keep this theme. That will be our home base. If we lose track, we'll remember it's about Bruce Lee. But <laughs> we're one of the stories that I really got engrossed in was and, and Zanetsu, Zanetsu, blonde kid, little derpy, super simpy. But let me tell you something. When lives are on the line, he is ready to zone out to get out of that thinking mind and perform that one kick that he's done a thousand times. Mind you, once upon a time, this kid turned blonde all because he got struck by lightning. And what's his power? Lightning. Like, you can't get any more poetic than that. And the beautiful part about it, and let's go a little bit deeper with the thousand um, punch it. Um, yeah, the thousand tries with the one punch. Within that, once you hit the 10,001, a new door might open. Something that is beyond what has been pushed beyond the 10,000 styles that have been pushed. You realize there's an extra door, but only you through this exploration of, let's say, it's not divinity, it's devotion, because you're devoting yourself to this one practice. Through this devotion, you now unlock this door. It's like a secret side quest that only you could unlock. And I also want to say this to the audience is that just because we're saying this that doesn't necessarily mean like follow our path to do it follow your path you know don't try things just because it sounds interesting really do things that you believe in if you don't believe in it there's not going to be a spark and you're going to wonder why you don't feel ignited it's because it didn't spark you simple as that but to go back zenetsu at the end of this story when things are really escalating at the end of this saga he unlocks this other door and how respectfully defeats an old acquaintance of his that he practiced under who was envious of Zanetsu's ability. And he had to go really deep into his dark side and not embrace his light the way that Zanetsu did. So, you know, we learn different things, for, especially from our failures, such as, you know, our enemies and such or what we deem our enemies. We, we shouldn't see it as that. We should see it as like healthy competition. They should be seen as people that continue to inspire us. Like when, and now I want to venture in another journey as to why I feel as excited as I do, you know, this evening is that's what I recognize with my music. I go back to my original practice, the simplicity of it. And I'm able to really resonate truly with the music that I make. And that's something that we don't really get a lot. We get it verbally, we get it through lyricism, we get it through poets, we get it through the visual, but sometimes there is a sense of sonic waves that really need to embrace you like deeply, like penetrate you. And I only get that through the time that I'm making music and when I release it, you know, there is a part of my ego, and I, I said this earlier today, but I really realize this because I feel like it's me saying it, it's not, somebody else on the internet or whatever. But although there's a part of my ego that desires that people really get into it and they share it with other people, another part of me is just so proud that I can go back and listen to this at any time, at any tempo, any pace, at any feeling. And it's only something I can really enjoy. You know, as that's all of us as creatives. Some of us have paintings that we don't show to the world. Some of us have poems that we don't release to people. Some of us have books and stories that we don't put out to the world. And 
on the flip side, it's also okay. Like, maybe just share that with the few people that know you. You know, maybe just share that with the people that really resonate with that. Because it's also the depth. It's like, it's like a singing bowl. When you really get into the flow of understanding that vibration with this particular material, with your particular material as well, you're then able to radiate it so strongly. But the moment that you try, you know, with that thinking mind again, I'm peeling the potato, you lose that you lose that flow and that's okay. If you're meant to lose it, you're meant to lose it. Embrace it. We can always go back when we can. But damn, like, but now you, after learning that lesson, you'll start to understand the importance of the energy of what we consume and what we put out. I mean, shit, I even want to highlight what you were talking about too, is that like, I'm not gonna lie. If I'm, I'm not eating, I'm watching content about food. That's crazy. Fast food is no longer a physical place anymore. Fast food is literally in our phones. We can get it through the door. We can get it through just stimulation of hearing it cooked, imagining the smells because of the names that they're using. What? That's crazy. That's manipulation in a sense. You can, you see, yeah, let's breathe on it. Cause I'll, yeah, we need to breathe on that. Yeah, yeah, you know, you. You made me breathe a little bit because it's true. It's true. There's a, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of seduction, you know, there's a lot of seduction and it goes into the programming. It goes into the constant, you know, just putting it in the face. It, it's an obstacle course. One of my mentors says, we're in a great obstacle course, you know, everywhere you look, you're hit, you're hit. It's like, they're, they're coming from all sides, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the oh. beautiful thing about that game of tag is that you're always learning. That's that's our that's our journey. That's what eventually gets us to the point when people see us with whatever the circumstances. They're like, "Wow, they did it swiftly. They did it with grace." But you have to understand, like, and there is some content that is really like your content. For example, it's the perfect example. That's the stuff that is fulfilling you spiritually. It's filling your soul. It's filling your mind. It's filling all of the gaps that you've had about thoughts you may have been sleeping on or dormant on. That's what you do. You create those, you stretch out those networks. You bring them together. That's what your content, Nabiha, and so many others like you guys, like that's what you guys do. And I'm so honored to have gotten to be a part of this, like to know all of you and Granted, again, it is on this digital web, but damn, if it's also a network, and that's what we are, and it's not just more than your net worth. Like, get that, get that grimy shit out of here. I'm so tired of hearing that. Like, net worth is more than just like what attracts and you know money or whatever. It's really about how it fulfills you, just as this network is. So, for all of you that are with Jerome, follow Jerome, follow Nabiha, follow all of these wonderful souls, like, because they also interact with so many other beautiful spirits, you know. I don't have the time, I really, you know, want to devote it, but I also know there's only so much time that I can really devote to really creating the life that I truly desire. And these are opportunities that you create as well, and Nabiha as well. And that's why I mentioned you guys, to really allow us to show up, just journal it. These are our journals. You know, that's what also has changed and made this the way that it is, made it so centralized. I mean, it's kind of funny that you think you call it that because, you know, they got cooking magazines, they had porno magazines, and now it's all on your phone, you know? But they don't have magazines for how to really lift your spirits. That's why those are called books. That's why those are called museums. That's why those are called, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's also out there. It sometimes doesn't even have a title. It just, it's the freedom. It's the freedom. Mm. I love, love that, man. I love that. You know, Brother Dorian, like earlier you were talking about just just having the courage and sometimes it takes bravery to come out of your shell and share the pearls that are inside the shell, you know? Like there's a pearl inside that shell, but we don't want to open and like let it, you know, because we think maybe, maybe somebody might snatch it, you know, maybe somebody might grab it and we won't have that pearl anymore. But what really allowed you to come out of your shell and to show more of yourself to the world, to show more of your creativity and not to just hold it in tightly, you know, to where it wouldn't be released? That's very beautiful.
beautiful question and that's something i really kind of like started piecing the answer to recently and the truth is jerome anybody on the chat like just raise your hand for this question i'm about to ask how many times or have you seen somebody or you've experienced like oh damn i made that idea x amount of time ago and here it is in physical form that's the truth that there's truly nothing new under the sun like music in itself vibration in itself sound all of that it's really nothing new under the sun but the truth is you can also manipulate it you can create your own colors you can create your own paintings and murals like you just have to do it you have to put away that fear because the longer that oh i heard this recently the longer that you hold hold on to it, the more time you spend regretting and creating stories and narratives of why you didn't have the life you wanted versus you do it. And you can at least say you have two things you can say. I tried. And I learned something and my life is wherever it is. And I did it. That's it. Those are the only two options that you have for real. And so like for me, I realized when I started putting things out and I saw the abundance flow to me, it's a lot like anatomy. Like I, like recently in, in class, we're talking about how, even how we tense our muscles, right? And all of the moving intricate parts that it takes, how it requires a chemical valve, it requires an electrical valve from your nerve in order for you know, salt to get in. And once you have enough salt and you need enough potassium to come out, it's a flow. But what I'm trying to say is that it all requires something because over time, if you don't use those codes that you are already built with, you get older and they whittle away because you neglected it. And you, and I think that also builds up another topic too. And I feel it's not really part of it. Like neglect grief and the grief of not putting out art, art at the time that we make it because we were waiting for this perfect moment. <sighs> Honestly, like you have to let it go and you have to also be okay that if it's just you who's the biggest fan and you're the only one buying it, that's totally okay. Like I've spent so much on shirts, on like apparel that really excites me and inspires me. And honestly, I haven't sold a single thing on it. Well, no, not true. Maybe like one or two things, but that's okay. But like, 90% of everything else, I honestly give away to the people that really like mean something to me because they were a part of why that is there. Jerome, you're literally on two of my songs because the words of what it means of like you, I really love that I hopped into that live when I did and how you captured of what it is that I'm doing. And I didn't see it at the time. It's like when people really, I, I have this analogy about projections. We have a few ways that we do it. One way is that we project other people from what we can do from their resources, theoretically. And we then have the projectors like you that really see the radiance and the energy and the vibration that they give off of just what they're putting out. And I'm like, I'm going to create the narrative of what they're trying, like the best intent of what they're trying to create. And that's why also you, all, all of your lives with every new random person, it's like you've met them all of your life. You, that's just the energy that you carry. It's a confidence of like, yo, we're going to kick it. We're going to have fun. We're going to talk about life and just the flow of it all. But to continue, like, you have to just do it. And for me, I realized that. And when I started doing it, my muscles started reaching higher. I was able to take in more. And one thing I, I noticed today in particular with a breathing practice I had, I recommended to you, uh, Breathing with Sandy, um, I felt like this humming of a vibration like within me. It felt like a sunrise. It felt so internal. And the fact that we get to have those experiences for ourselves is also creates the other side of the art being released. Sometimes we just love it so much that we only keep it for ourselves or like what I was saying about myself is like, you just share it with the people that mean something to you because they carry that message like innately, you know, whether you've known them all your life or whether you just met them, 
like two shirts that I gave out to were people that I met randomly at a event for a film screening and it was open it was free and I was like fuck it why not I want to network I want to meet new people and I pulled the Jerome on me I pulled out you know my questions and stuff and like I got to really know how others ascend and how they really are rising to the occasion and it's so inspiring and it just lets me know damn like I can do that and I hope anybody that's watching this not just at this moment of time at 854 Eastern Standard on April 2nd any time you're watching this in the future like know that now is the time now is the time mm. it's always now it's always now it's a gift you, know. you gotta unwrap it you can't let it sit and collect dust unwrap that shit man don't wait until mom and dad wake up no wake their asses up while you unwrapping your gift Just do that shit <laughs> This is the message. This is the message, Dorian, you know, and I love how you just, you, you express it so eloquently, you know, the present, the present is a gift, you know, we got to unwrap it now, you know, now, like, what, what better time is there? You know, if they say, if not now, then when? Because ironically enough, like, when will then become now? Right. right. And, <laughs> and, and if not you, then who? <laughs> that goes to the, that goes to what we just talked about with the people that, or when it comes to us, we're like, oh, I have this idea, and then the next who did it? Mm -hmm. I think the Lorax even touched on it. Now that I think about it, low key, huh? Thank you, Doctor Seuss, or the movie creators, whoever. But either way, like, there's always lessons to be learned and. If you're gonna have lessons, why not have fun doing it? <laughs> yeah, I think Dr. Seuss said something like, and don't quote me on this, but he said like, you are you that is truer than true. There was, there, there's no one around that is youer than you. I know which one you're talking about, yes! Right? Say that one more time, because it just hits so. Like, you are you that is truer than true there is no one around that is youer than you you know you're the youest you can be like there's never been a you before and there will never be a you again ever 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 right ever in the history in the history of all humankind you are the first mm -hmm. and you are the last you there will never be a you again you, right you are, you are the infinite you are the ooh, and uh, we'll, we'll get back to infinite <laughs> you are the in you are the beginning and end you are the point you are the spectrum you are the space you are all of it kings queens gods goddesses all of you like even goons goblins like all of you even if you steady mobbing that's okay we come up in iwasabi like what's popping uh, anyway <sighs> Yeah. Now, Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. So, one thing that really excited me today, Jerome, one mm -hmm. thing that really excited me, I don't like the the simplicity of the infinity symbol. Mm -hmm. I don't like how I can flip it and it looks like a number eight. Because if I'm teaching my kids one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, infinity, like what? They don't need to count anymore. Anyway, that's not the point. My point is, is that today I was really, or the past 24 hours, I was really just like playing around with just ideas. That's what we have to do. We have to stay curious. We have to keep our minds open. And as, as I've heard this one quote before, li be listening 26 hours a day. Let me say that again. You'd be listening 26 hours a day. How do you listen for those extra two hours? Not just by staying awake. No, 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 you need to be fasting because that time that you're too busy consuming, you can be consuming through here, through here, through here, through here. But what is it that you consume? Hmm? How deep is your listening? Anyway, anyway, all I know is that all of y'all are listening, okay? I just appreciate y'all for listening. Anyway, and today I finally came across a, a design that is so, to me, I find so simple. 
but it hits me so deeply. And I love how the possibilities of what came from just this one design has branched into. It really felt, it honestly, it's like that gateway that we're talking about. Once you practice your thousandth and one punch or whatever number it is, I, it felt like I opened up a door to like what Ascend is really meant to be. And I realized everything has its moment of time. Like just the formulation of Ascend of how I have it spelled on my handle, on my name and et cetera, et cetera. That took time. You know, I would say that took like about 25 years for me to, for it to be embodied. I just knew that for me, and to go back to another question that she had about when did you realize you just need to start doing it? I realized I no longer want to be Dorian Alexander Sensat. No, I want to be, I want to be me. So who is me? And I started with my name. I was like, okay, this is my name, but now let's start breaking it down. And as I started breaking it down, I realized, oh, I hear it. I hear the sound. Dorian Mode, you already know. We do that all the time. Mix a Liddy in. You already know. But anyway, but that's the thing. Even with just Dorian, it can be confused with the Dorian Mode in music. It can be tied to the Dorian fruit. I don't want to be tied to something. I want to be the action. I want to be the beginning, as you say, or the ending. So when Ascend came about, I was like, oh, it's a verb. It's nothing else. Like, you can't confuse it. <laughs> there's no confusing Ascending. Like, there's no doubt. I even, had, I even had somebody ask me who helped me make this design possible. He asked me, he was like, what's the opposite of Ascend? Descend. <laughs> there's no confusing. So going back to it, then came, all right, well, what does the sun represent? Okay, I am a musician, I am this, I am that. But then it's like, okay, let's go deeper than that. And it went to video creation, it went to coming across what I want to learn about myself to get deeper with my spirit, you know? That's how we come across this content. That's why all of us, everybody that's listening, present, future, whatever, now, that's why you're here. You're here because there's something in your spirit that has questions and you want to radiate with people that are helping you bridge those gaps. And it takes time. It takes a lot of time. You know, that's why like Jerome, you, you are truly a scholar. If we're playing Dungeons and Dragons, D and D, not the other kind, but best believe they don't disturb us. Anyway, um, you are truly like on a magical realm. You help us radiate our mana. And there are people that show the physical signs. And it's so sad when you, you know, hear stories about, you know, your Dr. Sabies and whomever, going back to all the other artists and healers that have yet to be named, you know, RIP to them or shout out to those people. Um, we're just trying to heal the world. And sometimes we are not objectified. Well, we're, you know, eyed. That's what I would call it. We're eyed. Ah, I like that. We're eyed. I'm just going to leave it at that. Eyed. eyed? We're eyed. How do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> that, that reminds me of the story that you were talking about where you dumped you trash in another person's trash. Like, you were eyed, you know what I mean? But like, ah. Oh. But at the same time, you eyed back in order to get that understanding of like, hurt people, hurt people. So our eyes come from a source, you know, of understanding and awareness, but like, damn, there's so many intricate layers behind it. Mm. I look, we even got a classic right here, a certified classic with that storage. That's Carly. <laughs> That's Carly, man. She's awesome. She's awesome. Shout out to Carly, Michigan in the building. Shout out to everybody, you know. Shout out to you, Dorian. Shout out to all this love. Like, thank you for, for just dropping gems, you know. And every time you speak, I know that it's channeled. It comes in channeled, you know. There's no filter. There's nothing that's blocking the information. It's just straight up, like straight up down, you know. So thank you just for just giving it in that authentic way. Like I said, there's never been a you before. There will never be a you again, bro. Never. Yeah. You know what the universe starts with? Come on. Come on, baby. 
come. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm. So this is timeless. You know, this is timeless. Yes. 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 I um yeah. Everybody, I you know, thank y'all. Not just you know, this isn't my. I really don't want this to be my ego speaking, saying thank you for showing up for this vessel or Jerome or this media space. But thank you for showing up for you. That's something I really hear a lot from all of our practitioners. And again, this is why we're here. We are here because we are practicing those things that other people are only dabbling in. But there's something deeper about it that really gets us going. And it really... Um, I really love that you talked about channels. Oh, remember, ah, Rock Lee. You always talk about Rock Lee. We're, let's talk about Guy, Guy Sensei. How do they get to their ultimate power? They had to unlock their channels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Avatar Aang had to do the same. You know, Avatar Aang from The Last Airbender, he was with a uh, Guru, Guru Patil. Yes. You know, there was a guru like that met him at one of the air temples mm -hmm. and he, he walked him down the whole system, like the whole chakra system. He showed him, he was like, you know, if this gets stuck in the river, like it can't flow, you know, if I'm this fogged up right here, it won't go. I'm with. Mm. So he showed him, he was like, they unblocked all of the, but right when he was about to blast through the crown, you know, when it was about to go down and he was about to go through the crown, fear stopped him, you know, something held him back. Mm. But, you know, it actually reminds me, I'm going to put in a little teaser. Okay. But I want you to just look at it and just sit with like all the possibilities that just holds when you see that. Do you, do you see what I just posted? Okay. Fear, 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 <laughs> clear, year, tear, peer. It goes on and on. Like, I was even thinking to myself as you we were talking about Avatar is that, you know, now I, it's one of those things where I can understand why there are certain fran franchises or certain stories that are that tried to stay as relevant as they can as long as possible is because there is a truth and a wisdom in it that is truly timeless. Everybody's over here tripping about, oh, this actor is playing this person. How about they're not talking about chakras? How about they're not talking about these really deep storylines about how we build our father and son and brotherly relationships, how we build our friend relationships, how we build our relationships with the queens and goddesses that surround us, how we have respect for them. It's hard to keep that timeless because there are other things about it. There's there's the fresh coat of paint. What, what did they say? Polish a turd is still a turd. But the thing is that these aren't turds. These are really nuggets of gold. They just shitted on it and then painted the shit, but they don't want to take that all that off and really show the gold. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm happy I made somebody laugh, that's all I can say. But, but, but you know what I mean? Like, that's why we come to these places. That's why we search YouTube University is because it is a universe and a database of information. So if we can find, I don't know, meaning when somebody is having a retrospective about Final Fantasy, like, talk about it. I mean, I understand, I respect that too. I under, I respect that retrospective because guess what? There are people that took time to build that video game, not just that video game, that story, that world, that whole narrative, that saga, and to make everything in their ability with the tools that they had to reel you into this world, to take you away from the shit that you're going through and be like, hey, there's other shit happening in the world why don't you have a slice of that instead? Stop having apple pie, have key lime pie. Not that public shit, if you know what I'm talking about. Like actually going to key 
like the keys and getting yourself key lime pie. If you know, you know. If you don't, that's okay. All I'm saying is that you need to change it up. And when you change it up, like, oh my God, like, there's so much. And that even goes with my creativity. Granted, like, I make songs, the music that I really resonate with that I create now is the very simple shit that I don't expect people to really listen to. And, and I, I'm okay with that. But the shit that, like, people are really listening to, I respect it because I know that I took time studying that craft or having an interest or having a curiosity in that genre, spell, realm, etc. for people to resonate with, with it. But I also know, just like how we talk about there's only you that can do it, I also know that I can drop the... I can drop the facade that I need to try to be like somebody else. I even said it... I even said in this song that I sent, only sent you. I have yet to release it because I have some adjustments I want to make, but I sent it to you. It's like, don't compare me to K-Dot. Don't compare me to J. Cole. I shared that song with somebody that I thought was close to me. The first thing they did was do that. So are we really listening to our channels? Are we really listening to the people that are also, also opening their channels for us? Like, we have to respect that. Like, there's so many times Times when people say, "Oh, you have all these problems and etc." and whatever, you know, just like how you were talking about in your in the fasting channel. Uh, for those of you who aren't in it, is I remember you were talking about how you went ten days dry, and you called your mom and you're like, "I need you to swear that you're not going to freak out." And then you were like, "Like, I feel the best I've ever felt in my life." Why is it that we have to warn people not to freak out? What is there to freak out about? Like, I am, if anything, mom, I am taking up, I'm using up the time that I have been given to consume what matters. And ironically enough, the thing that matters isn't really made of matter, technically speaking, or it's like tangible, you know? Like, they always talk about texture and all these cooking videos. They always show you what kind of consistency, etc. But... Have we ever thought about creating it? Have we ever thought about developing it? Like, and actually manifesting it. That's what Qigong does. That's what breathwork does. That's what these exercises do. They are to channel your chakras in order to shape it. You want to really put out fire? Work with those channels. Like, it takes time. And, you know, just like what Aang had to face, there's fear, there's regret, there's all these other things behind it. But, man, when you finally let that bullshit go you're like damn it was that easy <laughs> the whole time the whole time yeah <laughs> you had the choice the whole time you know so man thank you for these reminders like i needed this i needed to hear this man straight from you straight just from the source you know thank you <laughs> so much Jerome like truly you know like the way like just what you're saying to me is how I resonate with anything that just comes across like your content I don't have to message you I don't have to like I don't have to comment I just know that energy that you just gave me is what I put out and knowing that that's what I'm getting back like that just goes to show for everybody watching like and listening to the physical doesn't really matter like I just expressed that my energy went to Jerome, and Jerome brought that energy back. Granted, Jerome just got that energy, too. Like, he, he's just on it, you know, like, on it like Sonic. But the point is, is that when your energy is really true and you're resonating with people whose channels are also open for you, you know that it is true. Yeah. So, Jerome, thank you. And one little shout-out, because I'm wearing it right now, uh, you know, might as well do a little flex, because I you really go with the shout-outs, Jerome, and I want to help out the people that also inspire me. Um, Kibi, I met them in Wellington, Florida. Um, keep, keep excelling before expiring. That's inspiring. See, we even got the Jerome thumbs up approval, and we got easy clothing, and all of that. All of you just remind me of that we are all chosen to create something for the network that we are in. So, Jerome, thank you for holding the space for this invitation. Thank you all of you for showing up for you. And thank you for being you. Sir. Yes, sir. Much love. Take care. Take care. You too.
Night. <laughs>